Okay, y'all. This is all about the fishing. The other day I caught a bass and it was a nice size one. And so I just started all this videotaping and this new to this YouTube and all this other stuff like that. But this is something I've been doing for a while. And so I just want my fans out there to know it's more about how you break down your body of water. Every pond, every lake is broke down the same way. You want to find that, that ledge, that drop off, that structure that's got good cover and good shallow water nearby. So the two key aspects that you want to look for is real good shallow cover near real good deep structure with cover. So if we have a front come through, especially in the springtime like right now, when it gets cool and then it gets hot, them big bass can travel from shallow to deep fast. And in that cover, they got all of the aspects of food and shelter that they need. That's the key to catching the big bass more than it is which lake or river or pond you're fishing in because every body of water, the fishes act the same way in it. If it's a cold front coming through, they're going to go in a depth or in a place where they feel comfortable. They'll do the same thing in a big lake that they do on a small lake. It's not the lake. It's how you fish that body of water is what I'm trying to say. And I had to learn this over the years. As I learned this, I became a better fisherman. I really did. And you guys, people that fish out there with me before I started doing this videotaping on Facebook and all this, that they was like, damn, damn, how you do that? Well, see, I learned the key to it was good shallow structure near good deep structure. And another pointer, plastic worms. I love plastic worms. I use plastic worms. Always be open to new ideas. I use plastic worms, I use swim baits, I use crank baits, I use top popper, I use jigs, I, I, I'll rig them up to where I think they work, I use a swim bait with a split shot to make it drop down real fast and wiggle to the side, you have to be creative, and a lot of people want to just stick to one thing, or oh, I throw the plastic worm, catch what I can catch out of that, but you'd be surprised if you go out there and try some different things to catch your bass, and you'll see how successful you become. And make sure you have some spray. Spray that thing so it smells good. I like to use um, garlic and crawfish. To me, the garlic and the crawfish are the two top scents that make the fish hold on when they bite. So, and you got to know the bass forages. Crawdads, which is the little jigs. Crawdads and shad fishes and shiners are a bass main forage. So if they're not eating off one, they're eating off the other. You got to know that. And then you just got to find out where they at and fish both of them baits. Crank baits, plastic swim baits, all are imitations of different type of shads and shiners that are in the water. They got different colors and sizes and all that. So basically, you know the forage, you just got to eliminate, you got to cut down to what size the fish is willing to eat more than the color and the depth that you fish, it, where you fish it at. When you combine them two together, that's when you got you your fish. That's when you catch your fish, your big bass. Like I said, I've been doing this for a while and I said now it's time for me to do a video for my fans so they can understand how I do it because I don't want to be the only one out there catching them big bass. There's plenty of them out there for everybody. So like I said... I'll let y'all know in my next video. When I get time to fish again, I'm not working. Then maybe I'll do another shoot. But till then, I'll see y'all on the water.